In 1617, the Catholic Habsburg Ferdinand of Styria was chosen as King of Bohemia in modern-day Czech Republic. The kingdom had been carving a distinct path from the Catholic Church a century before Luther, and this had recently been affirmed by the Letter of Majesty in 1609, signed by the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II, which guaranteed religious tolerance in Bohemia. Protestants argued that it entitled them to build churches on bishops' land, and when Catholic authorities disagreed, they threw them out of a window, in what is known as the Defenestration of Prague in 1618. Tensions escalated until the following year, when Ferdinand was deposed and the Calvinist Frederick V of the Palatinate was invited to become king in his place. Meanwhile, Ferdinand II was elected as Holy Roman Emperor. Ferdinand made an alliance with the Duke of Bavaria, who was leader of the Catholic League, formed in 1609, to help put down the Bohemian Revolt. In 1620, the rebels were crushed at the Battle of White Mountain, and Frederick got the nickname the Winter King after his short-lived reign. The war, however, had only just begun, and the Emperor's swift action in Bohemia made many Protestant German princes feel threatened, alongside Christian IV, King of Denmark, who entered the conflict in his capacity as Duke of Holstein to defend the sovereignty of his territory. The Peace of Augsburg, signed in 1555, did not last because it only recognised one form of Protestantism, Lutheranism, and by the 17th century another major strand of Western Christianity had developed, Calvinism. In the lead-up to the war, there was a build-up of alliances. The Protestant Union was created by Frederick V's father, Frederick IV, of Lutheran and Calvinist principalities in the Holy Roman Empire in 1608, and the equivalent Catholic League, commanded by Field Marshal Tilly, was formed in response a year later. Much of the disagreement was to do with land as much as religion. The Protestants wanted to hold on to church lands, which had been confiscated during the Reformation but the Catholics wanted them back. Some historians also see the conflict as intrafamilial, with the ascendant Wittelsbach branches competing for their relationship with the Emperor in the Palatinate and Bavaria, Calvinist and Catholic respectively. Bavaria becoming the eighth elector state, and that branch of the family being given the Palatinate, makes for a neat conclusion in this interpretation of the war. It is likely that the two sides could have come to terms after the Bohemian defeat at White Mountain in 1620. What happened instead was that a regional rebellion became an international conflict. That did not mean, however, that an entire nation experienced war simultaneously. For one thing, Germany was 150 years away from unification and was extremely fragmented. But it was also a conflict in which the front was constantly shifting. Although it dragged on seemingly interminably, fighting was far from constant. Nobody at the time experienced it as a neat 30-year period, either, with the goalposts of the defenestration of Prague in 1618 and the Peace of Westphalia in 1648 really rather arbitrary. For the Dutch, it was part of a wider 80 years conflict with the Spanish, and the French kept fighting Spaniards for another decade after the Empire's truce. In 1629, after Christian IV of Denmark's intervention ended with the signing of the Treaty of Lübeck, and after the Emperor had proclaimed the Edict of Restitution, which desecularized electoral archbishoprics and redistributed land to Catholic princes who had been promised territory in lieu of monetary payment for raising troops, it seemed that the war once again was reaching a conclusion. Several factors conspired, however, to prolong the conflict another two decades these being Swedish interests in the Baltic, French unease, and Wallenstein. The first two factors are intimately linked. France, although a Catholic country, had a dynastic rivalry as Bourbons with the Habsburgs. They were therefore willing to finance the Lutheran king Gustavus Adolphus of Sweden's expedition to save North Germany's Protestant states from the clutches of the emperor, while conveniently enabling Swedish Baltic domination. That is not to say that religion did not motivate the Swedes, it was just that the church and state were closely tied together at this time. The Swedish war in northern Germany went well, despite atrocities such as the siege of Magdeburg in 1631, where 20,000 people were killed. 
Indeed, such successes were made that Gustavus decided to expand his original objectives and push into southern Germany. Field Marshal Tilly died of wounds in April of 1632, and Munich fell in May. The Swedes' luck didn't last, however, and Gustavus was killed at the Battle of Lutzen in November. By 1635, both sides seemed to be losing, with General Wallenstein going rogue and being assassinated on imperial orders, and the Swedes' abandonment by the Saxons, whom they'd intended to liberate with the Peace of Prague. If the Lutheran monarchical alliance with Gustavus Adolphus seems unlikely, then French support for the Calvinist Dutch Republic seems even unlikelier. But that was the political reality of the Bourbon-Habsburg fight for the heart of Europe. The French aimed to turn explicitly pro-emperor states into neutral territories by offering military protection with the secret goal of gaining control of Western Germany. Their incursion into the Thirty Years' War was also part of an ultimately successful scheme to disrupt the Spanish road of supply lines from Iberia to modern-day Belgium via pro-Habsburg territories along the Rhine. In 1637, Ferdinand II died, and his son Ferdinand III was elected to succeed him as Holy Roman Emperor. Five years later, Cardinal Richelieu, who was the French equivalent of Prime Minister and architect of the intervention, died. These two events would set the empire on course to the Peace of Westphalia in 1648. At Münster, the Holy Roman Empire made peace with France, and at Osnabrück, with Sweden. Calvinism was officially recognised. Principalities and city-states within the empire were given guaranteed autonomy, and Switzerland and the Dutch Republic were formally acknowledged. Eight million civilians had been left dead by the conflict. Ninety-four percent of those were the emperor's subjects. Much of the countryside had been devastated by armies dependent on pillaging to sustain themselves. The deep cultural impact of the Thirty Years' War can be seen in plays by Germany's best playwrights, Friedrich Schiller and Bertolt Brecht. Only World War II was a greater human disaster.